welcome to new FDA approvals podcast. This is Dr. Amahit Nichols, and this is the new approvals for from the FDA for October 16th, 2023, and this is for the last week. And thanks so much for listening. Please do tell your colleagues if you like this podcast uh, to help them stay up to date. Thank you. All right. First up this week, the FDA has approved Velsipity, also called Atrazumab, for treating moderate to severe ulcerative colitis in adults. Atrazumab, or Velsipity, is an oral medication that binds to the sphingosine 1-phosphate receptor with strong binding affinity for receptor types 1, 4, and 5. The approval of Atrazumab, manufactured by Pfizer, was based on safety and efficacy data from the Elevate UC52 trial and also the Elevate UC12 trial, both of which were published in The Lancet in March 2023. Atrazumab is the second agent in the S1P class approved for ulcerative colitis in the U.S. The other agent in this class, Zaposia, also called Azanimab, and that's manufactured by Bristol Myers Scribd, received FDA approval in May 2021. Also last week, the FDA has approved the combination of ancorafenib and binimetanib in BRAF mutant metastatic non-small cell lung cancer as detected by an FDA-approved test. The approval granted to Array Biopharma, which is a Pfizer subsidiary, is backed by data from the Phase II Pharos study, that's P-H-A-R-O-S, among the 59 treatment-naive patients in Ferris, researchers reported an overall response rate of 75%. Of the patients, 59% had responses lasting at least 12 months with an undetermined median duration of response at this point. The combination of Braftovi-Mectovi, which is the brand name for that combination, is already approved for use in patients with unresectable or metastatic melanoma, with a BRAF mutation. In non-small cell lung cancer, the V600E and V600K BRAF mutations occur in approximately 2% and 10% of cases, respectively. Also this week, the FDA has approved marketing of Histosonics Inc. Edison system for the non-invasive destruction of liver tumors, including unresectable liver tumors, and that uses a non-thermal mechanical process of focused ultrasound. Histotripsy uses focused sound energy to produce controlled acoustic cavitation that mechanically destroys and liquefies targeted liver tissue, including tumors at subcellular levels. According to the FDA press release, non-thermal focused ultrasound should be considered only in patients with a sufficient amount of functional liver reserve to withstand the destruction of the planned volume of liver tissue. According to Histosonics Inc., marketing authorization makes Edison the first and only Histotripsy platform available in the U.S. And now a word from the supporter of this podcast, Nascent Medical. Attention all businesses in need of exceptional medical writing support. We're Nascent Medical and we are the solution. We are a team of skilled MD and PhD level medical writers who specialize in fast turnaround needs assessments, manuscripts, slide decks, ad board summaries, and much, much more. Don't settle for anything less than pure excellence when it comes to your medical writing assistance. Just visit us at nascentmc.com. We're here so that you never have to be without excellent medical writing assistance. That's nascentmc.com. Also last week, the FDA declined to approve Pratisaran for ATTR amyloidosis, despite a favorable recommendation from the advisory committee. In a complete response letter issued to the manufacturer, Almalam Pharmaceuticals, the FDA noted that Pratisaran did not meaningfully improve the condition of patients with heart muscle issues or cardiomyopathy, caused by ATTR amyloidosis. That's characterized by abnormal deposits of transthyretine protein in organs and tissues. Persiteran, which has the brand name on Patro, is already approved in the U.S. to treat nerve damage in adult patients with hereditary ATTR amyloidosis. 
the FDA's decision would not impact on Pacho's commercial availability, according to Almodan. The rejection was a rare instance of the FDA going against its advisory panel's backing for a drug. The FDA's outside panel of experts had previously backed Patisseran's expanded use, as noted in a September 17th, 2023 episode of this podcast. But the committee also raised concern about the meaningfulness of its efficacy benefits. Anulam said it will focus on another drug candidate, Vitrisaran, which is an under-the-skin injection in late-stage trials to treat ATTR amyloidosis-related cardiomyopathy. And finally, this week, the FDA has announced the creation of a new Digital Health Advisory Committee to help the agency explore the complex scientific and technical issues related to digital health technologies, DHTs. That includes artificial intelligence, machine learning, augmented reality, virtual reality, digital therapeutics, wearables, and remote patient monitoring and software. The committee will consist of a core of nine voting members, including the chair, The number of temporary members selected for a particular meeting will depend upon the meeting topic. According to a written release from the FDA, the Digital Health Advisory Committee will provide, quote, relevant expertise and perspective to help improve the agency's understanding of the benefits, risks, and clinical outcomes associated with the use of DHTs. The committee should be fully operational in 2024. If you'd like to apply for that committee, the link is in the podcast notes. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. And please do tell your colleagues. I do see an increase in the downloads. So it's very encouraging. And I like this information to get out there so we can all perhaps do our jobs just a little better. All right. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye.